Hey everybody, Masaki here, and welcome back to another episode of Shining Force. As you recall in the last one, we got here to the quarry and we found out that all of the men had been taken down to the quarry by the army of Runefoss to dig for something. And we were asked to go down and save all of the men. And as you can see, our quality now actually looks a lot better than it does as I went online and looked before I did this because I wasn't liking the way the quality looked when I went to record and found out about a emulator that people were giving raving remarks to and I am liking the way the quality of this one looks a lot better. So let me know what you guys think about this one compared to the quality of the other one and if you like it enough I will keep using this for let's plays and streams of any games with it. And we found out about Xylo here that we needed a moonstone to create Lunar Dew to cure the madness that um, he was put into by the Runefa soldiers that would have helped save them. We came up here and talked to their, their leader here, the Matriarch, whose daughter named Diane had then joined us when we talked to her a little later on after the, she left the house. We found was an elven archer who we found out was also Hans betrothed. Uh, okay, um, later on this is the way we leave, but this villager is blocking our path at the moment. As soon as this villager gets out of our way, we'll head down here. We will be starting the fight in the quarry in this video. By talking to all villagers, they ask you to save their dad or their husband or their brother. Alright, come down here and you'll notice there was a workshop with some propellers and machine parts and a bunch of metal pieces and machinery and whatnot. And then a little cliffside area with a little runway type area or whatever you want to refer to this catwalk type spot or something right there. And we'll get a little bit into that spot a little later on. Let's leave right there. And we already went in right here and upgraded everyone's weapon and replaced items from the previous fight. And part of the reason I hadn't recorded a video in so long, aside from the fact that classes just kind of took a bit of precedence and I got really busy on weekends and was unable to devote much time to trying to record. Although last term I did do a Rogue Legacy stream and I did um, make highlights of the stream and put them on Twitch and made a highlight of the stream itself that's put on Twitch as well so you can watch the highlights and watch the whole stream itself. But for some reason, the highlights in the stream itself would not export to YouTube for me. So those are not on YouTube, but they are on Twitch to watch if you guys want. And I'm in the middle of a pretty big break before my last term of classes right now, so I'm hoping to get a number of videos done right now and get more done during my final term here. But, uh, I'm a little ways into, a couple weeks into the last, into this break now, and I'm sorry I actually couldn't get much done before now. But, um, I'm hoping to get a number of videos done now, and then get these video guys out to you over this week and get more done over this upcoming week before classes start. And then as classes go in the next couple weeks, get the next set of videos out to you guys as well. And we'll see how this all goes. But if you guys have been following me, everyone should be about level 9 or 10 now. Your casters and healers should be maybe level 8 or 9. But fighters should be about level 10. Um, part of the reason, like I said, that I didn't fight so much was because I had been actually stalling and practice are we'll grind it, grinding this fight about five times or so to get everyone up to about level 10. So I nearly have everyone at level 10 actually except for maybe one or two characters in their cast. And I think it's mainly like one caster and maybe one fighter that aren't level 10. But other than that everyone has essentially reached level 10 or just reached it in this video. So, but. With that said, though, no one will be getting promoted just yet for another fight, maybe another two or three fights. 
it depends. I don't quite remember exactly when the point when I promote people is off the top of my head until after I see what happens after this fight. Because it's another couple of fights, if I recall. If I recall good enough when I do it. Let me adjust my microphone a little bit here. Get situated a bit and we'll actually head into the fight right now and stop wasting some time. Okay, so there are actually four new enemies in this fight. We have two skeletons right here. One of the new enemies is these two guys right here, the Dark Elves. They are archers and ranged fighters at that. They have 16 HP, 26 attack, 9 defense, 6 move, 10 agility, and they use a steel arrow. They can attack two squares out around them all the way around. The Dark Priest here is another new guy. They have 16 HP, 25 MP, 10 agility, 5 move, 9 defense, 21 attack, a power staff, and heal level 1. This is another new guy, and there's only one of them, but this is not the boss. But they are really tough. They will hit hard, and they will take very little damage, like a skeleton. But they will hit harder than a skeleton, so be weary of that when you come up to fight them. And they are a lizard man with 20 attack or 20 HP, my bad, 24 attack, 12 defense, 6 move, 12 agility, and a middle axe. And this guy up here is the actual boss, the master mage, with 22 attack or 22 HP, 32 MP, 33 attack, 13 defense, 5 move, 26 agility, equipped with a holy staff and the ability to cast Freeze level 2. And he actually has a Dark Priest with him as a healer. And my phone just went off, but I'll turn down the volume so you don't hear it as it goes off. Give me a second while I do that. Alrighty, okay. So that's that for the new guys. Now as for the starting strategy here, these two skeletons, they're going to move about right here as far as they'll go at first. But after that, they will start coming up the steps right here. So do not place your healers, your casters, and your leader too far down the steps right away. Place your fighters and meleeers down the steps a little further if you're comfortable as they can take the damage and be okay, and fight them without too much trouble. Just remember, skeletons can hit hard, and they do not take much damage that easily. Unless you have a high enough level character, and they will hit your healers and casters really hard. So, remember, keep your... Keep everyone close together, but keep your healers and casters um, towards the back. And this is a good time to show off Amin or Balbaroy if you're using one of them. To showcase what they can do on the field if you haven't used them yet. Being a flying unit, they can fly over the cliffside. As they're flying, they're unable to go anywhere you want to put them. And so you can place them over the side of the cliff like this. Over open air, over the impassable mountains that no one else can go on. And take up a spot that no one else can and leave a spot open for someone else that you might want to have someone else that you might want to put someone else on without putting them too far out of range of movement for fighting sorry for the pause there <laughs> and then because they are flying slash hovering regardless of where you put them they have no absolutely no land effect for moving range ever At least as far as I remember, they never have any land effect whatsoever applied to their movement.
Uh, so as you can see, I'm keeping my healers and the two casters a little bit further towards the back. Kind of moving the close range fighters up a little further down the steps and up towards the front. Because I know that those um, skeletons are going to be moving up into front, up into everyone just like that. And Gort being the beast that he is doesn't take much damage at all from that. Okay, Arthur and Balbaroy right now are still pretty much just placeholders. Arthur more so. Gong is still just more essentially a um a third backup healer. Alright, may inflicts 9 points of damage, does a second attack, does another 9 points of damage, defeats the skeleton, gains 20 HP, and got 140 coins. Alright, Chris does 3 points of damage and got 3 experience. That might have been a bit risky, but... Everyone's close enough where it's not too bad if she were to get hit. Alright, I'll have Bubble Roy come up and take a swing. Alright, he does one point of damage and got two experience. I have the leader come down and take a swing at it as well, why not? Alright, Hero does three points of damage and got two experience. I have Ken stand right here and throw his spear. Ken attacks. Does 6 points of damage, got 4 experience. Oh darn, I can't put Henri anywhere where she's going to be able to cast a spell on him. Now when I get closer to where those elves and that one mage and priest are, I'll talk about um, the way the AI is set up over there. Alright, Gord attacks, does 5 points of damage, defeated the skeleton. Got 11 experience and the 140 coins for defeating it. Alright, now that those two skeletons are dead, I can actually start moving everyone a little more freely down the steps and forward into the next area of the fight. So let's actually start doing that. So is there any games you guys have been looking forward to coming out? Um, I actually got Xenoverse recently. I'm actually pretty far through the story already. I swear, some of the missions in that that you have to do by yourself... Oh man, I just... I just about screamed bloody murder with how difficult they got and how many tries they took and... I was just shocked and dumbfound when I finally beat them and the game gave me a break or I was able to avoid getting chain attacked. I'm trying to figure out how to continue that chain attack from them enough to avoid being killed. Because you know when you'd sit there and they had chain ultimates on you or... They'd like ultimate you and then they'd like combo you and then ultimate you again or they'd do something to keep not air knocking you so you couldn't stand up and use an item to heal. It was just like so so mega frustrating. Um, I have Tales of Zestaria on pre-order right now. Really looking forward to that. I actually looked into that some. There are some other games that have been coming out or they're in the works of coming out that I'm actually pretty decently looking forward to getting. Um, Final Fantasy XV looks to be decently interesting. That Igarashi's Bloodstained, definitely want to try that. Oh, what other games? Um, Zestaria I mentioned. Hmm. Oop. Oh yeah, Persona 5. Definitely want to try that. 
Just trying to make conversation here while, you know... Oop, don't want to move him right there. Well, we're just moving forward in the battlefield and there's not too much going on, you know? Okay, well, I'll go into this right now. These guys can only attack to here, I think. Because I've never seen them attack down to here. In any of my playthroughs, essentially. When they've been standing right here. As I moved past this part of the field, so... What you do once you get up to here... Because this Dark Elf always stays here, and this one moves to here... Is hug this spot of the field right here... And this guy seems like he'll never be able to hit you along this line of the field. Up here he'll be able to hit you once he moves over here, but right here he can't hit you. If you move right there though, this guy can hit you, but from here to here you can't get hit, so... This is your safe zone here. All the here. And then you just gotta watch, you know... Watch them and watch the mage. And then as you can see... These two priests and skeletons that were just sitting down here... All four of them move up to the bottom of the steps right here to block your path at the bottom of the steps there. This priest and mage stay right there to block your path at the top of the steps. And that's just kind of the AI's basic, uh, their basic strategy in this fight as they block your path at the steps. It is pretty effective and it does block you for a decent couple of minutes at each spot, so... As basic as it is, it is pretty efficient. Now I'm just going to move up Ken here and have him throw his spear across the gap there. So he does 12 points of damage and got 12 experience for attacking the elf there. Let's move Henri forward there. Move Tao here. And when I looked at my game in former not that long ago, I actually saw, I think it was six games I was interested in. I listed off about five of them, or four maybe it was. Uh, he got 48 experience there at 160 coins. Sorry, I didn't see the damage he did that killed him as I was talking. <laughs> right, well, now that he's dead, I can actually just move everyone up, so it doesn't really matter as much now once you kill that elf that's up there. And as you can see, the Master Mage and his Dark Priest moved down the steps from that platform they started at. Yeah, Persona 5, Final Fantasy 15, Bloodstained, Zysteria, those games were all on the list of the games I was interested in getting. And like I said, Zysteria I've already pre-ordered. I actually knew about Bloodstained from a bunch of Let's other Let's Players that I watch. And that actually, like, if you don't know who Igarashi is, and I've known about Castlevania for a long time, I just didn't know who he himself was, but, you know. I'm not an advent follower of the industry that heavily, so I will openly admit that. But once I hear about people, I keep in mind who they are. So it's not like I openly forget who people are once I hear who they are. If that makes sense the way I worded that. But he was the godfather of the Castlevania... Metro... Of the Castlevania series slash Metroid Vain, Metroid Mania. The French... <laughs> he was the, Met, the Castlevania godfather and... The person who started the Metroid Mania genre, essentially. And, like, he started his own company, and Bloodstained is his game, and it had a Kickstarter, and it did, like, so incredibly well. It hit so many different... The Kickstarter for Bloodstained, it hit so many milestones that they had set up that it was just, like, incredible. And raised a ton of money. And like anything I've seen for it, like pictures from it and all, it just looked really, really good graphic wise and everything. And anything I've seen for it that was story based off of the story of it that described things about it. The story of it and all sounded really good. 
didn't seem like it was lacking in elements or anything, according to like the story behind it. So I'm pretty looking forward to the challenge of it and the gameplay and hearing the story behind it unfold as I play it, you know? Alright, so Ken's attacking right now, 10 points of damage, defeated the Dark Mage there, got 12 experience, 170 coins. Alright, sorry, I know I skipped out when, um, the, when Gord attacked. Didn't mean to there. Alright, Maze attacking the Dark Priest here. Exactly 16 points of damage, defeating it, 20 experience, 125 coins. May hit level 11. Defense one increased by four, hit points increased by two. I'm right, gonna have the leader attack the skeleton here. Five points of damage, three experience. Give someone else a shot here at um, attacking it. Okay, well, we're starting to go over 20 minutes now, so. Shortly here, I'm going to have to end the video after we kill the skeleton here. If I can get it killed, I'll end the video. Alright, come on, people. I don't want to take too long to do this now. Alright, yep, I figured you were going to attack him back. Our skeleton attacked our leader, doing 5 points of damage. Eh, it'll do. Right, we're gonna have Henri attack the skeleton with Blaze 2. She did 11 points of damage, defeating him. Got 16 experience and 140 coins. Alright, and with that everyone, we are past the 20 minute mark, so I will see you all in the next one. When we continue on the path to free all of the men from the quarry and see what the army of Runefoss is doing here. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and follow me on Twitter as I post everything going on with Animal Crossing New Leaf there. And I will see you all in the next one. Until then everybody, goodbye.